Shalom. And it's nice to be back and offer a word about this week's Torah portion. Parshat Emor. Leviticus chapters 22 and 23. It's a rich sedra. It opens with the rules governing, governing the Kohanim, the priests of Israel, with additional laws about the ancient sacrificial services. Then laws concerning all our major biblical holidays. Guidelines about the Ner Tamid, the eternal lamp. And then the showbread, the 12 loaves of dis on display in the ancient tabernacle. And then a very interesting narrative about blasphemy to end the Torah portion. In other words, there's a lot to unpack, a lot to study and discuss. But this is the one line that I want to work with. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 32. It says, You shall not profane my holy name. But rather, I will be sanctified in the midst of the Israelite people. I, the Lord who sanctifies you. The key words, You shall not profane, desecrate my name. My question, what does that mean? How do you profane and desecrate God's name? Well, I got to give a huge shout out to a Rabbi Shlomo Shulman, who taught something about the word chilul, desecrate, that I never knew. You see, I always understood that in our tradition, velo techalalu et shem kachi, literally, you shall not profane my holy name, meant more than just how we use the name of God in our speech. It's more than just what we refer to all the time as blasphemy. In Judaism, Chilul Hashem is not simply using God's name inappropriately in our speech. Chilul Hashem in our tradition is when a Jew does something that brings shame to our people, to God, to our heritage. If, for example, someone is a visibly practicing and religious Jew, and let's say that person acts dishonestly in business, unethically toward others, mistreats the poor, hurts the innocent, that person desecrates the name of God. That becomes Chilul Hashem. I've spoken about that often when I wear a yarmulke in public. I represent my tradition. I represent God when I do so. I represent the Torah to everyone I meet. Just like, really, I represent the Yureki family name to whoever I encounter. And if I act in a manner unbecoming of a good person, I not only desecrate my family name, but the people that this head covering symbolizes. When that happens, to paraphrase the rabbis of the Talmud, people will say, woe to anyone who studies the Torah if that's what's taught in it. Woe to the father and to the mother who taught that person Torah. Woe to the teacher who taught him Torah. For this man studied Torah, and look at how evil his acts towards others are, how ugly are his ways, and therefore, how ugly are his people's ways? So that part I knew before Rabbi Shulman. But this is what he taught. He said the Hebrew word chilul is usually translated, as I mentioned earlier, desecrating, profaning. So chilul Hashem, desecrating the name of God. But Shulman says, yes, but that's not totally accurate. Chilul literally means in Hebrew to create a vacuum. To create a vacuum. Now that's cool. Because think about it. Someone who commits Chilul Hashem, Shulman says, does more than just profanes the name of God. That person creates a vacuum in the world in which God cannot exist. When someone commits an offense against God, which is so against a human being, excuse me, but which is so ugly, so cruel, it causes those who witness it to question whether there really is a God who would let someone get away with that in his name. How often does a religious person, a preacher, a rabbi, a priest, an imam, do something unethical? Let's say it does something immoral. What happens? It hits the news and people say, you see, that's why I'm not involved in religion. It's all a bunch of nonsense. There is no God. There is no purpose to religion. Look what religious people do. 
That, my friends, is creating a vacuum where there is no space for the Divine Presence. That is Chilul Hashem. So my friends, when I hear people say that God has been banned from the classroom, banished from America, I respectfully disagree. God is declining, unfortunately, in America. But it's not because of any banning or banishment, but rather because too many religious people help create a vacuum where God cannot exist. Act in oppressive, intolerant, unloving ways which empty the universe of God. When faith is made to be an ideology of cruelty and hypocrisy, ignorance and fear, when religious leaders act corrupt, when parishioners become an angry and judgmental lot, God's name vanishes in a vacuum of emptiness. Chilol Hashem makes God's presence absent in the world. On the other hand, Kiddush Hashem, sanctification of God's name, through deeds of kindness, compassion, thoughtfulness, and inclusion, provides the moral oxygen that allows the Spirit of God to become the breath of life in our world. May it be our task to oxygenate God's name with deeds of goodness. Shalom.